Hello everyone, welcome to Selenium basic training which is part of uh, JPAC and it's day two. So yesterday we have talked about uh, automation testing, Selenium ID and Karthik had explained how we write uh, manual test cases and uh, which can be automated. Okay, so we, we, we have seen that the various steps we follow manually to uh, complete a test case and how we can uh, same thing we can replicate in Selenium ID or any other automation tool. So let me go to the today agenda what we have. So today we'll go through working with Selenium ID. So yesterday we already seen but we'll see some more uh, functionalities of Selenium ID. All right. And uh, then we have uh, in agenda element identification. This is the very important and most uh, uh, you can say uh, important topic of this Selenium ID because here you will have to uh, make yourself strong in element identification. Okay, that will be used in web driver when you will progress for advanced courses and uh, we'll use XPath uh, and CSS. We'll give a brief idea about this. And uh, so we'll see how we can write uh, without using any add-on because uh, Firebug and Firepath are add-ons are available for Firefox, which we can use and get the XPath or uh, CSS, okay? But uh, we'll see how we can write manually also how we can write ourselves without using these add-ons but we'll see how we can install these firebug and firepath and uh, uh, get the xpath or css okay and at the end if you have any questions so we'll uh, go over one question answer uh, for 10 15 minutes all right so uh, i'll hand over to karthik Welcome back to the day two for our Selenium basic training. Let's go through some of the fundamental things that we're trying to do. Like Manoj has just mentioned, I'm going to quickly write down what we will cover today again, just for our reference. First is um, custom scripting on Selenium IDE. All right. So yesterday we saw the record and playback. Today we'll talk about custom scripting. But to do that, like Manoj said, we need to talk about element identification. And how do we do it using different options? We've got about five plus options. And we'll look into each of them and see how we can do it. Um, third is, uh, we will need to talk about the different formats to which we can convert our convert our scripts into okay so this is fundamentally what we're going to try and cover today there's a lot to it more than what you can see as as is uh, but as we go along we'll keep progressing on that so what is very critical is for us to start with uh, the first one is to custom scripting. So let me quickly open the application that we have. And the Google Drive. Where's my G Drive? So give me a quick second while I get this up. Can you all hear me okay, everyone? Yes, Karthik, we can hear you. Thanks, Manoj. All right, great. All right, team. So it's going to be very exciting today. We'll talk about how we do this. So what is this, guys? So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, okay? And you have to tell me the answers. I wish I had a poll for it, but let's do it via chat, which is your Q&A. First question that I'll ask you, what are the three fundamental rules or thumbs of rule that we look at when we talk about automation team? What are they? 
In fact, why don't I pause this whole thing for a quick minute, create a couple of poll questions and ask that. So not only will you know what you're answering, but also everyone else in the audience will know. So give me a minute team. I've stopped the recording, so it's no more live. Now I'm going to go to polls and add a few polls team. I want to talk about a few questions. It's very important. Uh, three thumb rules on automation. Uh, hmm. Guys, hold on please. I'm trying to actually create this, but then I want answers to be displayed. It's not a multiple choice questions either way. So, and I've got already so many answers there. So, there are only two or three questions. So, you know what? Let's forget about the poll thing. And let's go back. So, team, I've eliminated the poll. I'm not going to do that. So, what are the three thumb rules, team, for automation? Any automation, forget about automation testing. Any automation requires those three thumb rules. What are they? ERA. All remember? What is E for? Where is ER? I think I did mention here and somewhere else. Lot of drawings from my kids, so please ignore those team. All right, there you go. All right, what are they team? Efficiency, reusability, and accuracy. There should be no question about this basic thing, team. And what we do with IT Learn is give the most important potential information that is required. That's it. All right. We could not be more wrong about this. Any automation that you do has to be efficient. It has to be reusable and it has to be accurate. That's it. That's period. All right. So everything that you do should revolve around this. Now, when it comes to teaching an automation tool, what is it that we do? What are the two questions that are important? When we tell someone who has no idea, let's say alien visits us and we try to tell that alien as to what to do, right? They look at the steps and instructions. What are those questions? Two important questions, team. Right. So thank you so much, team. I'm just looking at the answers from the audience and I'm kind of uh, repeating that. It is what we want to do and where we want to do them. The what and the where of, of it. Okay. Remember that this is what is very critical for an automation tool to understand really. Now, what relates to which kind of an option within Selenium IDE, everyone? It starts with a C. What does it relate to? What does what relate to rather? Command, exactly. It's called the command within Selenium IDE. And what does where represent within Selenium IDE? the target. Correct. Perfect. That's it. That's all you need to know before we move forward with what we've planned for today. All right. So let's open Selenium IDE. Did I store yesterday's test case? Let's see. I don't think I stored anything from yesterday. Oops. No. Nope. So now I've lost everything that I did from yesterday. How many, how much time will it take to recreate what I did from yesterday team, the record and run. Of course, I took about 15, 20 minutes to explain the concept, but how long will it take? 
two minutes, one minute, seconds. Okay, let's see. Very simple. We already know what the test case is. Where is the test case here? What do I need to do? Open a browser, navigate to the URL. Which is the URL? I have it here. Enter email ID, enter password, click login and confirm successful login. Correct? This is what we're going to do now. So recording is on or off by default. Is the recording on Selenium IDE, which is a recording playback tool of what we do as user steps, on or off by default? It is on, team. Okay, so this is on. Now I click on it, it is off. So see, you go to it, click to record. Now it is on. All right. So here's the URL. I enter some random information and some random password. The application will let us log in because we have not yet linked it with a database. So I say log in. I don't care about this, so I close it. When I close it, nothing happens here because it's not recognizing the alerts and pop-ups as of now. And we get this. Now, what do I do to complete the final step in the process where I say confirm successful login? The reason the UI for this is a little different from the regular one is this website or web page is responsive. That means as I resize it, it will start kind of, you know, putting things together and reformatting the way it's presented. Now, I want to make sure that the dashboard is shown. So I want to make sure that this is shown. How did we do it yesterday? What are the steps that we did? So guys, always remember this. When I say guys, I'm referring to everyone, guys. Uh, always refer to this. When the question is asked, it is the steps that is required to get to the answer that is important. I don't need the answer. Answer is not critical for me. How do you get to it is the most important thing. And this you should remember as a golden rule. Every one of you. Okay? Always the steps to get to a solution. So what do we do? Right click on that element. Go down. You will see the show all available commands and the different things we can do with this kind of an element called dashboard, we can see it out here. Now what do I need to do? I want to verify if that text is available. So I go through each and everything and I click on that I want to verify that this text is there. Correct? Now let me right click again and see, hey, verify text came up here. Why? I didn't even have to click on show all available commands. I did not tell you this yesterday. Why did this come up here? Why did it come up? What do you think it is? Why did it come up already there? Why do you think? Very important question team. Listen, two simple things. Either you are inside this webinar or you can leave this webinar guys. Very simple. Do not waste your time. Okay? Very, very critical that you involve with us and chat with us. If you're not active, then you're not learning. You're just wasting your time. So be active. There are dozens of participants on this session and it is very important that you critically involve and answer every question that I ask. All right? Why day? And always remember the words. Okay? lot of times the reason we fail is because we do not listen clearly. Why did this specific verified text come up here? It did not come up yesterday. Why is it there today? Because we previously used it. We saw that this is something that we use it. So as you go along and as you keep working with different things on the website, different objects, images, buttons, links, text, which are nothing but called as elements, you will start seeing those appearing out here. Alright? But once again, 
please do be active in interacting back with me. Otherwise, there's no point in attending the session team. Okay, very, very important and critical for both of us to learn together. All right, okay, so now this has come. So is this a good test? What should I do now? Stop recording, then go to file and say save test case as. So out here, I'm going to put it under, let's say, documents. I'll create a new folder here. I'll call it as Selenium Basic Training. And this is November 2016. Within this folder, I'll call it as um, any op underscore TC001. What does TC001 stand for, team? Test case. TC for TC, test case. What is 001? ID number, not version number, it is ID number or test case number. But why 001? Why not 1? Why not 01? Why not 401? Because typically for these kind of applications, we'll have hundreds of test cases, at least dozens. And sometimes when you store them alphabetically, it will not get stored correctly. That's the reason we kind of give what could be the maximum number of test cases as the number of digits followed by TC. This is called the nomenclature or some standards that we will try and follow as we keep going along. All right. So I'll talk more about this as we go along, but this is my test case. Now, so what are all these things that we're seeing out here? These are steps for one test case. What is that test case? So I'll call this as test case ID, and this is going to be any odd underscore TC00. Oops, one. Now, all the steps belong to the same test case. Fair enough? So we have kind of saved it as one test case team. So I execute it. What will happen? Very fast, it will execute. I'm going to reduce the speed through ID and re-execute so that we can manually see what's happening. And it will execute and it will confirm that. Light green says a step is done. Dark green is basically saying we are trying to verify something or make sure that a step passes there. And it gives us a darker green shade on that step. All right, everyone. Log tells us what is it that we've been doing so far, if we're executing and so on. And if it fails somewhere, it will also tell us where it failed. So yesterday, do you guys remember how we made this test case fail? How did we make it fail, team, yesterday? by providing something incorrect, especially where we want to verify text. So I'm going to say this is dashboard, whatever, okay? And I will rerun this test. It's trying to execute everything, but at the end it found that out here it did not find the same text. And then under log, I can see the state. What you're seeing today is primarily what is automation testing all right a tool doing the work for us and we are sitting back waiting for the results to come up and observe if they're correct or not all right now how can i make any of these other steps fail verify text okay fail but why do i have to test if the web page is opening let's go back here Oops. Now, a result is basically if a test step is a pass or a fail. So, which step do you think will fail team or has a chance to fail?
last step. Last step has a stand chance to fail. So this can be that the result is fail out here, correct? So everything else is pass. So do you mean to say that nothing else in here will fail? Then why should we even test it? The fact about testing, software testing or application testing is that any step that we perform can fail. Any step can fail. If I know which step will pass or fail, I'll go very quickly to that step and see if it will pass or fail, right? Right? But then you never know if the browser is opening, if we are able to go to the page itself, if I can see an email ID field and enter information or password or even can I see the click login button and so on. Right? Now, let me ask you this. I made the last step fail. How? By saying that we verify in text at a certain location and this is the value. Right? Now, tell me how can I make any of these other steps fail? For example, the type fail of username. How can I make this fail T? Think about it. Very, very critical of what I'm saying T. This will kind of make or break your automation testing career. Very simple. How can I now make this fail? Can you all see the highlighted step? Oops. Let me highlight it again. The username. How can I make it fail? What should I do so that I'll get a red line there? Okay, so let's use an invalid username. Right? I used invalid value here. Let's change this to uh, KK at okay, so I'll say blah 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 at blah 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 dot com or dot com. Fair enough. Now let's run this test and see. It is such an amazing play tool team. It is an amazing play tool. Selenium, ID, everything that you do with Selenium. What happened? Where did it fail? Do you think this step failed? It did not, right? Why didn't it fail? Because this application as of now is taking whatever we want. Now, let's assume that this was some other application. Let us say like interapp.com slash app, okay? What will happen when we go to such an application which is like this? Interrupt app, okay? So here I do login and then I enter username, password and then I try and login, right? If I enter incorrect password, username, the question is very simple team. Where will the failure happen? Entering the data or after I click on login and see that incorrect username, where will the failure happen? So, the failure will never happen at this step. Whatever information you enter, it will type it there. So, how can I still make this step failure? Now, here is where comes the concept of element identification. You remember I told you two W's? The what, which is the command and the where. Okay? So if I mislead the where portion, then maybe I can make it fail. So now let's look at the where portion for this step. Command is what we have to do, which is type. Target is where I have to do, which is id equals login underscore username. What if I write user ID here, just playing around, alright, and now I'll run this, 
It's taking some time, if you notice, to execute this. How long will it take? It's going to wait for a default timeout, assuming that the application will load and there is certain uh, time that will allow for it to kind of do it or then it will go on and start doing the rest of the steps or maybe the execution stopped there. I don't know yet. Let's see. Let's look at the log. Test case failed, but I thought it should keep going further. Honestly, team, I assumed it to continue to go further with the remaining steps because that is what we would do in a typical test case execution when we go to WebDriver. Now, if I go to options and under options, I click on options in Selenium ID, there is a timeout here that we give which is the amount of milliseconds that we want it to wait before it throws an error. I'll talk a lot about this default timeout because it's a very big concept uh, later, but right now it says 30,000 milliseconds, which is like 30 seconds. That is the amount of time it will take. At this point, this failed team. So the recognition of an object also is very important. Why? Sometimes that the developers will develop everything, but the field itself is missing. It's like a significant error, but it can happen. When we do automation testing, you cannot assume that, you know what, developers are not that stupid, they cannot make such an error, and so on. It's not about the developers team. It is the environment and the pressure under which we do things. And that's why sometimes you can never leave a stone unturned. You will have to keep looking at each and every portion in it. All right? So this can be a problem. Now, how do we master the art of finding the where? What does this id underscore login username mean? What does this id equals login underscore password mean? What does the CSS mean? And so on. That is the next most important aspect and that we will call it as a element identification. Everyone with me right now? This is a very critical aspect. I know some of you are just attending this training as the demos, but then this is the most important learning when it comes to any automation testing team object identification or element identification. So there are two parts to a team. Whenever you see something, try and understand the depth of it. There is something called as an element and there is identification. What is an element? Okay, let's take a website. I will have an image on this. I will have a video on this. How do I put a video like this? I will have links on this. I will have a logo out here. I will have some more links here. I have some text here. I have maybe a checkbox out here for some kind of a form. Oops, sorry. And maybe I have some radio buttons also. Each and everything that you see in a web browser is called as a web element team. All right? Everything that you see out here is a web element. Okay? From a Selenium language perspective, they are called as elements. They are nothing but objects. All right? That is where the concept of objects and classes come into picture. Let me tell you very briefly what is object-oriented programming system or software. Oops, what is it all about? Nothing. It basically says that everything that you do, treat it as an object. Now, what is an object? What is a class? That's the big, big question. How many of you are 100% sure 
of knowing the difference between an object and a class when the nomenclature comes from the IT industry team. How many of you are totally sure? Do you know what as an object and a class is? Yes or no? Then I'll try and make my effort to answer it. I've got four yeses, two noes, one more yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no. That's it. We just have 20 people in the session. No, no. So it looks like a lot more noes than yes. Even if I got one yes and everyone else no, I would have explained it to you. But let me tell you. Very simple. Very simple and important to understand this concept. Then everything will become, again, these are fundamental foundations. That's where we'll pick up everything from. All right? Okay. Let me say about my car. Now, what is my car team? Can anyone guess what car I have? Can you guys guess? <laughs> Honda Acura. Audi, I don't have Audi, BMW, Audi C, Audi, Ferrari, <laughs> I wish, Mercedes, <laughs> that's nice guys, Benz, Civic, <laughs> Automatic, Lamborghini, Nissan, I'm just reading out what's coming, Hyundai, Tesla, BMW, Camry, trust me guys, we still have not got to my car, okay? This is interesting to see Karthik. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I said this is interesting to see the answers. I know. <laughs> Amazing answers. Camry class Odyssey. All right, guys. Porsche. MDX Subaru. Okay, nice. Nice. In fact, you know what? Some of you are right. Because um, honestly, team, I have like four cars in US and three cars in India. But then, because I'm a car fanatic. All right. Now let me tell you my favorite car that I own. I own a Porsche. All right. Now that is my car, right? But so many other people have Porsche, right? So Porsche is the class or the type of the object that I have. When does it become my object or an actual reality? when it has something like a VIN number, when it has maybe a license plate number, it has a color, a make, a model, and so on, or year of manufacturing and so on. That is able to distinguishly identify where you can see it or touch it or do something and say that this is an object. Yes, it belongs to this class, which is class car, under which there is a child class called Porsche. All right? So my car is not this. It is this one. You understand what I'm saying? Thing? An actual model in reality. A class basically says what does it have, what does it look like, what features does it have, and so on. Then you take a replica or actual product out of it which is one thing unique by itself it is an object so class defines how and what it looks like or what it can do object is the actual real life scenario of it that's it team. so for every object now comes the second aspect team. you understood the difference between class in an object, everyone, class is telling us at a high level what kind of a object we are looking at. Once we take a model out of it and create it, it becomes reality. So like God comes and says that human is a class, but Karthik or Manoj or anyone else in the team like Hima, Kiritika, Sujit, Sumati, Sashikala, Kushal, all of you guys, you're all one object. We're all one object, one final entity. Okay? Now, class never has a definition or an identity. 
it represents a group of things. So many people will come in that and have all these dots like represent objects within that class. That hey, within this class there's so many objects. Now let's say we develop iPhone 7s. Maybe there are million iPhone 7s in the market, but we know a finite number for it. Right? There's a finite number for it. When we talk about an object, there's a couple of things which are very important. One are called properties for the object. The second are called methods for that object. Properties basically do two things, team. They define that object or they identify that object. Method is basically only one thing. What is it that you can do with that object? Let us say a car. What can you do with a car team? You can drive the car, move it forward, backwards, sideways, this way, that way, take it for a service, refuel a car, and so on. All the verbs that we do are on what you can do on the car. All the adjectives that you can do or adjectives, right, that we can use to describe my car are these. Like what? Am I right, team? Adjectives, right? Yeah. I'm checking my English because trust me, I will feel so pathetic if my English is bad. The only way, team, and believe in this, this is another thing about communication skill and English speaking. I have picked it up myself over a long period of time. All right? It's not that I came from one of the best English speaking schools in the world or from India and so on. I came from a very regular normal school where hardly people used to speak English. But I took a very conscious effort to correct myself, to put me through that, you know, very hot furnace where the toughest steel comes and I'm still improving. Even now when I make a simple defect or error on my speaking or writing, I'll feel very awkward. And that uncomfortable feeling always keeps pushing me towards learning and improving. I am never born with these things, team. It's an acquired skill. It is all an acquired skill. Believe that, believe in yourself, and we all can acquire new skills and really take it forward. All right, so what was I saying? It's like an adjective which describes something. For example, I'm talking to a car. What color is it? Is it red, gray, silver? Is it four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, four-door, two-door, coupe, sports model, and so on? By that, we're able to define it. But then, I can't uniquely identify it, right? How do we uniquely identify a car team? Win number, the chassis number, and so on. Actually, win number will be on the chassis and so on. License plate, and so on. Let's say it's parked and there's just three cars. Very easy to identify that, hey, you know what? Go find the first BM. My car is parked in the parking lot there. It's a BMW. It's enough. But let's say there are hundreds of cars, like a car dealership, then out and so on. So then comes the identification, which is the unique identification. How do we uniquely identify an object? And that's a property for that. How do we define that? Lot of things. See, I'm Karthik Kusiredi. That's my full name. All right? Now, but Karthik Kusiredi, maybe there could be more people with it. Let's say I'm the only Karthi Kusred in the whole world. No one else has this name. But how does he look? Does he have gray hair, black hair? Is he tall, short? Is he lean, fat? How do we describe him? Just the ID sometimes is not enough, right? ID can uniquely identify. But how do you describe a person? That is where it will come with able to define or say how that object will look. So the properties will give us both this things team. Something to uniquely identify and something to be able to define what that is. Methods are what we can do with that object. Now, when you go back after the session today, look at every object. 
everything around you with these two things. What are the properties for it? What are the methods or actions that it can perform? That is very important thing relating it. Now let's go back to our basic concept of command, target and value. Everyone with me? Anyone board team? Please honestly you can answer because it's a private chat. No one can see what you're saying. Just you and me. <coughs> All right, team. Anything, please speak up. This is the opportunity for you, team. It is your session. It is not my session. Now let's talk about Selenium. Command, target, value. Command basically says what we want to do. Target says where we want to do something. Value says, let's say I need to perform some operation by giving some input. That's input or data I provide here. Now what is like those actions or uh, what did I say? Methods that we perform on it. Okay. That is the what. Where is how does a stupid tool like Selenium, which has got no intelligence by itself, on its own, it's nothing team. It's just an absolute idiotic stupid tool. Trust me on this. The reason I'm degrading Selenium is because Selenium or any automation tool will only be as intelligent as you are. You have to teach it. You have to train the tool. You have to tell what you do. But then it will do the small important thing called E R A very efficiently. It will do it repeatedly and it will do it accurately. Okay? Long after we have retired from our jobs. Alright? So where it has to do is defined by something called as element identification. The what is a very finite thing team. It is like open, click, type. What else? Open, click, type. What else could be what team? Can you guess and imagine? What else do we do? Open, click, type. It's not October, but open. We open something. We click somewhere. We type something. Hmm. In fact, how do we, in fact, enter any kind of an input into a system, what are the two devices we use team to enter information or interact with a computer? What are the two devices? Correct? Keyboard. Yes. Where we have all the buttons and characters. And then what is the other one? And mouse. That is it. Monitor is visual to us. Right? It is an input to us. It's not an output from us. It's not like I'm seeing something and that will get onto the monitor, right? <clears throat> That's still a technology to come, I hope. And if it's first one in the world to say, then we should patent this idea and say, what my eyes see will come on the monitor. So it's keyboard and mouse, right? So what do we do in the keyboard team? We type something, right? And what do we do with the mouse? We click something. Oh yes, we can drag drop, right click, left click. So there are some variations. It's not like as simple. But honestly, if you look at it, it is finite, correct? It is not infinite. There are certain finite steps of things that we do. And then there are activities that we do looking at the display. What is it that we do at looking at the display? We see, observe and take some actions, correct? Those are some additional activities. That is finite team. I am not worried about this. It's like going to an exam and saying, hey guys, what is very important for us to learn? Where will the biggest question challenges come? What should I learn first? Because I have to scram at the last hour and pass this. Okay? So this is very finite guys. Easy. Cake work. This is a biggest challenge. And trust me, it is not easy at all to learn. It is 
so tough that it will take you ages. What is this team? What is EI? It's not AI, it's EI. Element identification. Very tough guys. So tough that I'll cover it within the next 10 minutes. Alright? <laughs> it is that tough. Okay, let me show you what it is. Very, very simple team. EI is nothing but how does selenium know where to perform a specific activity on the application which is a web based application. Everything that we do with selenium is web based. Team. Always remember the basic fundamental. It is always web based. It cannot do on a desktop application. How many of you, guys, and honestly give me this answer, know the difference between a desktop application or a client server, as we can call it, and a web-based application? Yes or no? And I will not even look at your name. I just want to see yes or no. Yes, I know the difference. No, I don't know the difference. I will be more happy when I see no's, guys. When I see no, that means that I have a scope to explain. Okay, very simple team. I'll tell you the difference. Any application that you open using a web browser like a Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari and so on is called a web-based application. Anything else that you open on your system not through browser is a desktop application. That is it. Now do you see some icons here? Now out of these icons, which are the desktop applications that you see, please? Skype, yes. Notepad, yes. Yellow one, yes. Which is the Fresh Paint. This is a feature that's come with Surface Pro. I've kind of been shifting between Surface Pro and uh, uh, my Mac, so handbag, <laughs> yes. So that's it guys, anything Chrome, IE and Firefox are the only web-based applications that you'll see. Everything else is desktop application. So Selenium can help us automate and test only the applications that we can open on the browser, that's it. It cannot do for anything else. That's the fundamental rule. So Selenium needs to identify the elements that are there on the web-based application. So how do we do that now? How do we identify applications or elements on the web-based application? All right. Any questions before I go forward with the next 10-15 minutes explaining about element identification team? I'm kind of taking a second also to have some water, but any questions before we go forward? Why we use Firefox only? Can you explain please? Sure, why not? I know the answer so I can do it easily. <laughs> so the reason I did it is because the Selenium ID, right? It's only been built for Firefox. So when I do something on Firefox, that is when it can do the record and playback. But once I get to Selenium web driver, I can execute the tests on any browser. That's the beauty of it. Selenium ID is a starting point, but then we'll get into it. All right. So Firefox is open. So is Chrome and IE, right? They're open source. Chrome and IE also come by default with any operating system. So not because Firefox is open source, just that Selenium has been built, IDE has been built to be able to record and play back on Firefox. That's what they developed the developer did team. The developers decided, I'll do it only on Firefox, their call, their decision, that's it. And we're following it. But thanks to them that they said, you know what, Selenium ID is very minimal, the features, 
capability is starting, but then go to web driver. That's where the potential is. That's where the huge thing is. So 90% of what we'll do is going to be there. But if we don't start from here, we cannot do that. That's the reason we're still here. Okay? Now, and trust me, team, I'll tell you one more thing. Lot of people have called me since yesterday, after day one, saying, Karthik, Java. How do I do Java and so on? I say, come on. Everything is so simple and easy. You just need to learn it the right way. Not complicate things. Go very easily. Okay. So, team, now let's talk about element identification. Okay. Element identification is how do we identify an object? Now, very simple team. I'll ask you one question and then we'll go to the reality. Let's say how do I identify a human being? How do we identify? Name, yes. But looks, yes. But there can be people with the same name, right? Looks also could be very similar. I got a good response saying because I am one. But how are you one? Living thing, features. So it's not properties which define them like the brown, black, white, gray and so on. But how do you know uniquely? Yes guys, things like social security number or even email, right? Maybe a person will have various emails. But then it's also that DNA, perfect. DNA could be the best way. There's no double thought to it. It's a very unique way of identifying. So there are ways that we can identify anyone using something unique. Now, for Selenium to do all these tricks that we're seeing, where it knows where to enter the username, how does it even know where to enter the username? How did not put this blah, blah, blah that I wrote into password? Or say, oops, I did not find that. Right? How did it do that? Because it actually went through this HTML code. HTML is the hypertext markup language team. It is the basic building block for anything that you see on the browser. Period. That's it. Anything that you see on the browser is part of HTML. That is called hypertext markup language. Now, how can you all see the HTML code? How many of you have never seen what HTML code looks like, team? So the others don't have to answer. Only the people who have not seen it can answer. See, I'm so happy that I've got at least two or three responses which said they never saw what HTML code looks like. Right click on any given web page and say view page source. And this is the code that always tells us what the HTML is all behind this. This is the code team. This code basically tells us that depending on this code, what we see is being displayed out there. That is it. All right. Anything that we change here will automatically change there. So any website that you see, any web page that you see is built on HTML. And my sincere advice to each and every one of you is to get the basic knowledge of what HTML is. And to do that, you go to w3schools.com and just go through the simple HTML code. Okay, this is one of the simplest HTML codes you can see. So let's click on try it yourself. This is the code. This is the display. This is a heading, dear team. And I'll say run. There you go. So I write this code. I get this display. Understand? This is the HTML code. This is how it will look when it is displayed on a browser. Alright? So, 
this code always starts with a HTML tag and ends with a HTML tag. Less than HTML greater than. That is one tag within HTML. Everything else that you see is called as a tag T. So title is a tag and it will tell us what is the page title and so on. So for example, in this page, what is the HTML out here? Title is login any yacht. So do you see this login any yacht out here? That is what it is. Now let's say we look at some of this forgot password or user sign up. If I go here and try and drill down. Oops, where do I see user sign up or forgot password? Can everyone see where it is? Stuff, right? Navigating where that code is for that. How do I look at that code? Mm, okay. Maybe some people are bright enough to figure out it's line 55, line 56. But maybe others can't. And why should I even give all that effort to find where that is? I should have an easier way. I want to know where is forgot password in the code. It should be written somewhere in that code. How do I know? Right click on it and say inspect element. Inspect element will take us to that specific section of the code. It comes default in almost all the browsers these days. But then there is an amazing tool called Firebug. Firebug, I just did a Google or Yahoo, whatever, and getfirebug.com is the official site, is another add-on that we should have when you're working team. So let's say install Firebug. It will give us a great visibility at the HTML code because for element identification this is very critical. Isn't developer maintained any longer? We named current stable. Okay, let me click on this. Add to Firefox. Downloading. Team, I'm going to take another 10 minutes today, please, because I've actually not even started with the code of element identification because once day three you'll be perfect at element identification what it does it'll be amazing so now let's go to alt tools uh, selenium id is here but now you'll see a small bug out here it's called the fire bug fire bug is basically a simple amazing feature thing like it's showing here it'll show us in a much better way inspect element now comes inspect element with fire bug Okay, another free tool that comes as a free add-on with uh, Firefox. So let's look at it. Here is where the code is team. All right, here is where the HTML code is for this specific field called forgot password. Now you see forgot password. Now I'll write it is as I forgot the. Oops, not here. I forgot my password. Can you see what happened on the web page? I forgot my password. That is what Firebug does. It's a development tool which lets us easily customize and you know make changes to the website. And then this is so now let me ask you another question. I'm asking all of a lot of fundamental questions. <laughs> lot of fundamental questions. This is so important for you. I will give you all of you this link on the chat. All right. Just check your chat, everyone. You would have received this. Now you open this. Do you see forgot password or I forgot my password when I click on it? What do you see? You see, you don't see I forgot my password, right? Why? Because I changed it at my end, the client end, not the server. So what is this server client? Very simple team. This is very critical also, so I'll quickly explain that. 
accept it. <coughs> Let me take it. Okay. So cloud, they say right cloud, cloud computing and all that. New word for a very age old technology. So all that we do is there in the cloud in the server. Okay. My file, everything is there on the server. That server is this link, dev.atomic77.in and so on. So, if I need to access the information from here, I access the page, the files will get downloaded here and it will show it out here on the client. This is the client, server client. Okay, it will show the information here. If I change anything here on the information that is downloaded, it is not again reflected back on the server unless I submit or request for a change there. So what I am doing out here is just a change at my end. So this HTML page is already downloaded to my machine and what I am seeing is that version. All right. Now, when it comes to element identification, we have to go to each of the fields and identify it using some property. Like what we spoke about humans, we have social security numbers, DNA, email address, phone number and so on to uniquely identify it. For each of these elements, there's something like that. Let me right click on this email ID or username field and say inspect element with firebug. This is the HTML code for it. I'm going to copy the whole code and put it into my notepad. Alright. <clears throat> the first and foremost thing thing that any element identification is done by using an ID or name attribute. Okay. What is an attribute? What is the value of it? Let me tell you very briefly. The first word that you see after the less than symbol. Do you see this is less than and here is the greater than? Here is one HTML code. Okay. One line of code. In this, there are a few elements. HTML tag attribute name then attribute value okay the HTML tag is the first word which comes after this that is input okay the attribute name is anything that comes after it before the equal to sign it is ID the value is the value that is there after that in the quotes, this is the value. Now, does this specific element, so all the highlighted text is one element, which is what you see on the web page here. Okay. This is a different element team again. This one that you see is a different element. This is a different element. All right. Now, is this the only attribute name here? No, I have class also. Oh, so there are more attributes and there are more values. So attribute name, again, here is class and the value for it. And then, again, placeholder and the value for it, email ID. And same, it keeps going to, like I can say I'm a male, I can say that I reside in the United States, I can say that uh, I live in California, all these are my attributes and the values for it. So we use that. The first things that Selenium looks at 
is ID attribute or a name attribute and that is how it recognizes. Now let's say for example I do a new test on so I'll say file new test case and in here I'm going to do something on google.com right I'll start recording let's say I enter um, I don't know if there's anything with any of yet so I typed here in ID field this value and this has come up so I right click and say inspect elements with firebug I see this see it has taken ID but it can also take name so when I play this it will do the same and it will show me the results for any of actually it did not click on this I will do one more step out here and click on this now play this there you go right so for this specific field the ID or name is it somewhere here highlight let's do it again Where is it? Let me close this firebug and now let's ask again. Okay, there you go. ID is LST ID. You see this? It has recognized this by the ID. So ID equals LST ID. But do you see any other attribute called name? Now what if I change this? And now let's say let's keep it as a stream and say find. Do you see it getting highlighted in the browser? That is basically the tool trying to say that yes, I found it. If I change this from IB to IN, I hope there's nothing else like that. What is it doing? Nothing. It's not blinking on anything. You can go to log, clear this and say find again. It says located not found. Why? Because it could not identify anything with IN. I change it back to IB and say find, it can find it. Team, this is one of the most fundamental and very, very important factor on element identification. Please remember this. Okay? How do we find something? Now, I have an alternate. I can say name equals Q. And the reason I said name equals Q is I saw it here. And let's say find. It can still find it. So let's run this and it will run instead of any odd I'll say let's say IT learn and run it again it will type IT learn and it will bring up the results accordingly right so ID or name attribute is the first thing to then comes something as CSS and XPath alright now CSS is something called as how many of you know the full form of CSS team mm -hmm. I just got about three four five answers and that's fine. I'm not saying that you should be an expert at knowing them, but now you know. It is called cascading style sheet. All right. Now you know team. A lot of times people don't even know what is HTML stand for. That is fine. But someday you will know it, and then you will remember it. CSS is cascading style sheet. It basically tells us the way that things will look. In your firebug, one side is HTML code, the other side is this actual CSS. It basically tells us how the web page will look, what color, background, border, font, font size, margin, class, everything. So the two other ways to identify this thing is CSS 
and XPath. And I honestly like XPath a lot. All right. So I will talk a lot about XPath, and you will master XPath in the next session for sure. And by the end of next session, element identification will become a cakewalk for us. Sorry, Tim, I took much longer to explain this concept than I took in any other class, but just the fact that this was an important thing for me to show, and the concepts is the most critical thing. Once this is set, everything will become easy. So for some of you who are assuming that, hey, Karthik, you said you will teach Selenium in seven days, or you'll do it in 15 days. Guys, do not lose the confidence and trust. Just go with the right trainer, with the right kind of a program, everything will fall in place with it. All right? So we are here for a reason. We know what we're doing. We exactly will take you on the journey. I wanted to complete everything today. Sorry, Manoj, didn't give you a chance at all to speak in between, uh, except for when the cars came out. <laughs> I was happy that you could interrupt. I know we have the Enyot session also next after this, so we'll have to join to that. So guys, um, yeah, we have a hard stop as well. Any last questions that I can take before we connect again on day three, which is uh, not tomorrow, day after? Questions, team. And if you want to speak out something, I'll welcome you. Just raise your hand on the chat uh, on your go to webinar, and I'll mute you, unmute you. But then again, please be conscious of the time. We have so many participants on the session that I want to allocate uh, time equally for everyone. Any questions, team? So just before everyone asks me, everything is on ITLN in terms of the schedule. Uh, we may get delayed on schedule based on how we progress, but typically most of the things that you see will be part of the schedule that is mentioned out here. Okay. So we're doing the Selenium training now, batch B, and then batch A again will start from towards end of Jan. So you have both the options. And team, that's fine. If you want to join this batch, if you can't, can you repeat another batch? All the small nitty-gritties, don't worry. We're not very stringent as a training company that we want to you know, get value out of your money every time. We just want to focus a lot on your learning, so you should be fine. Anytime you can join. Uh, this session is, yes, available as a demo. Uh, the day three, I believe, is a paid, and this it will not be on the same link. It will be on a totally different link. So if you don't get communication, that means that we are continuing as a group there. Uh, contact number. So team, I'm JPEG. So, yeah, JPAC members can contact me directly. I'm going to put it on chat for you. Radhika. So, you can call me on that number. Isn't it better to use unique element fire identification? A um, lot of ways, but there's nothing called unique element. There's not, no property called unique element. Um, just to address who was that? Varun. Uh, there are a lot of ways, but there's nothing called unique element. It can be an attribute, but it's not a recognized one for us. So we look at ID, name, CSS, link text, link type, XPath, and so on. So a few multiple ways. Day three, we'll master all those, and then we'll talk about how to do our own custom script. We actually never did the custom script today, team. Sorry, because I had to explain the OOPS concept. What is object-oriented uh, approach? What are objects classes? All of that stuff. Our team, um, on, okay, here's the thing. You can reach me on the regular number 314-827-5272 on my website. For the next couple of days, I'm taking calls on that number as well during my US mornings. So I will try and pick up if my team does not pick up the call. If they do pick up, please tell them that you want to speak with me. They will connect with me, please. 
I don't chase uh, share my number because it's not possible for me team to really have conversations because once I start talking, I really want to talk. So the conversation is not like 30 seconds, one minute. They typically go 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and so on. That's why I don't share my personal cell number. But then reach the team, and they will let you know. Uh, JPAC members, uh, I will have it emailed to you all. Okay, uh, Amulya will be coordinating with you from my team along with Manoj. So you will get the email with my direct number. You can contact me. Anyone from JPAC, you're more than welcome to reach me anytime, team. If you've not got something to do with webinar links and so on, kindly contact the sales team. They'll help you out. How can I tell if my applications are right candidate for automation testing checklist? Um, yeah, sure, Amir. As we go along, we'll explore them at length because it's not an easy answer. For me, it's easy to tell very quickly because I've gone through so much and I've seen so much about automation myself. But then for you to understand or for me to really t t tell you about it, it will take a few hours uh, overall. Most of it will get covered in the training and then I can summarize it. Which testing tool should we mainly focus to build a career? I'll be very biased when I give my answer, guys. Okay? Till about three, four months ago, I'll say Selenium. Now I'll say Enyot. <laughs> I'll say Enyot because we know we're kind of developing it very close to our... And Manoj, very sorry. I do know that we have the Enyot session. So team, uh, just let you know, we have a great set of developers with any with them uh, once a week developing this framework. So... Uh, is getting pending because of the q and a today. So uh, any art is a great tool, but then if you look at market-wise, Selenium is amazing. But then HP UFT also is picking up great uh, length and uh, distance on it. Plus the fact that uh, there's so many other tools coming to the market these days. So let's see how it goes. But as of now, Selenium 1, UFT 2 from a functional testing automation. But it is if it's come to performance testing, web services, and so on, the many other tools. I'm part of Batch B, already paid for training. Day three will be tomorrow or day after. So, guys, don't ask me what schedules. Please do not ask me basic questions, guys. I am not going to do spoon feeding. Be self reliant. Look at the emails and trust me on this. If you do not read your communications, I am not going to be happy about it. Read the instructions, go through the instructions carefully. All right. Be extremely careful before you try and ask something which is already present with you. All right. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to be very straight because that is what is required for you in this industry today. Do not ask questions that you have answers to yourselves. Okay. Or find a way, please. When will the next session for JPEG? Same answer. I want to take this course and. We'll like to make payments in three terms. Vajinder, uh, please. What is the contact number again? Uh, contact number for IT Learn. You will see it on the website. Go to itlearn.com, please. You will see it on the top right. Is any art into market? Not yet. It will come up into the market maybe in what three to four months. Do we need to use Selenium IDE more than Selenium WebDriver in real work environment? No, absolutely not. Selenium WebDriver is the only way to go, but Selenium IDE is a great essential tool on the side. And I'll tell you why also Selenium WebDriver, how do we continue to still use certain aspects. So is Java part of Selenium language? No, Java is not part of Selenium language. Java is one of the programming languages that Selenium supports. So if you know Java, then you can do Selenium WebDriver programming and the frameworks very easily. After completing the training, we have demonstrated any automation jobs. 
So the concept is very simple team. Uh, just letting you know once again, if you can speak about any art as a framework, what it does and how it has been built and what kind of a potential it has, that will do wonders for your interview. Your skill on Selenium web driver, Core Java, Test NG, everything will come up automatically through it. That is the whole point of certification. When we certify you and then you go about talking about what it is in the interviews, that is what interview is going to be. It's going to be a lot of discussion on what is the framework all about. And once you can explain it, that will do everything for you. All right. Thank you, Anish. Appreciate it. Anything else, team? Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for the extended time. And we'll see you back in day three, which will be day after tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Thank you, Manoj. Thanks for the patience. Um, let's start the New York session after this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye then. Bye. Bye all.